into my video, I'm going to show you the best dance moves of all land. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to day three of the Rough Draft Challenge. So today is going to be a rest and reset day. I already got started on the rest part because it is 2.30 in the afternoon. And according to my Samsung watch, I was in bed for 10 and a half hours last night and got about nine hours and 40 minutes of sleep. Hallelujah. <laughs> I apparently needed it. Other than Evie coming to wake me up a couple of times, I got a very good night's sleep and that has been super helpful. You'll also notice that I'm going to be wearing my glasses in this vlog a little bit, which I don't wear very often. I am just looking to rest my eyes, feel a little bit better, take a little bit of stress off my shoulders. And I definitely am listening to myself more and more these days in terms of like, yes, there are things that need to get done. And yes, maybe there will be some people disappointed that things weren't done fast enough, but in the end, I'm no good if I'm not taking care of myself and that has to become a priority. And so that's what I'm doing and we're going to take it slow. So who else has a slow start to your rough draft challenge? I really have a feeling this week is going to be a lot about getting the story down, figuring out the characters and all that. And then next week, so a week from today, I fly out to Vegas for the Author Nation conference, which is one of the biggest indie author conferences. It used to be 20 bucks to 50K. And I'm excited. I'm speaking twice. So if you're going to be there, definitely let me know. I don't have any specific kind of Hardee's meetup planned, but I might plan one last minute if enough people say, yes, I will be there. I will be there. Also, I will be signing books at the Rave uh, book signing on Friday. So if you're in the Vegas area and you want to come order some books, I will link down below to a pre-order for some of my books if you want, or you can bring some of your books in and I will sign them. I would love to see some of you. I have not been good at promoting this kind of thing because I've just been overworked this year. So as I start to plan 2025, I'm going to make some changes and try to make things better, but it has been a fun year, just a busy year. So today... I am kind of making my way through a list of things. I just sat down or just walked around in my closet trying to figure out what outfits I'm going to wear for the conference next week. And I picked out a bunch of stuff, but also I have Rent the Runway. So if you've never heard of Rent the Runway, this is something I first heard about from Plan with Lakin. Many of you know and follow her. And it really is just a great way to have a monthly membership where you can rent designer clothes for work and conferences and events. And then you don't have to own them, but you can wear really nice stuff and try out new fashions. And that has been very helpful for all the conferences that I've been to this year. So I have two items here at the house that I'm going to wear next week, but I have a spot, three spots open. So I need to go through and pick, and I just need to uh, be careful that I don't spend too much time, like leaned over pouring at the computer. So I'm going to pick those outfits. I'm going to reset my planner. So my main planner has been set up for Halloween and I just printed out some of the digital dash box stuff for the month of November. And I'm going to reset my planner. I'm going to plan for the week. I'm going to order groceries, meal plan. I'm probably going to take a long bath. I'm going to sit outside and read. <laughs> We're just going to do all the self-care things, spend a lot of time with the kids, which I've already been doing all day. We had church this morning, edited the vlog, went out to eat and just had a general easy morning afternoon. Now the kids are on screens. George is watching an anime and I'm going to get to work on my planning. So what I'm planning to do with the story today, because <laughs> uh, that's really what we're trying to chronicle this month is I'm going to continue working out some of the things that I was working on yesterday. And I really feel like I could use George's input on some of this. He becomes one of my best brainstorming partners. So I'm going to pull out my mind map later when he's done watching that and I'm done with my planning and we're going to maybe sit outside for a bit or sit at the table and just brainstorm. I am 
excited to get further, but I'm also okay with taking it a little bit slow here at the start. So, all right, uh, let's order some Rent the Runway, hopefully, and get some planning done, and then we'll tackle a story. I saw her up on the hill On her way to the mill Proud and all loud I got my planning done. I thought I'd come sit outside for just a few minutes before we eat. And we have cows in our backyard, so they, they can be part of the vlog. Our garden is basically almost dead, but there are some red tomatoes on there. But everything else is gone. But hey guys, it's all good. They're so big. I love them. I do love the cows. We got the rooster over here. You can come say hi to the chickies. But they all seem to be inside. They're probably getting ready for bed. You can come say hi to the chickies. They're probably all up in their little roost. Good night, ladies. You guys all ready to go to bed? <laughs> That's Gus Gus, the rooster up there. We have a couple of different roosters. But I think all the ladies are in. Ladies are ready for bed. Our, the people we bought the house from had horses out here, so we have converted their horse barn into a chicken barn. The brightest sky I have ever seen, the most colorful one.
George and I had so much fun talking through this for me, talking about the story, talking through the story with someone else is such a game changer as opposed to just sitting there and working it out myself. I do always need pieces of that for myself, like working it out on my own and then coming to the table with ideas. But having George or a friend or somebody to bounce those ideas off of and really solidify it or I don't know it's a it's an evolution so to speak please ignore how messy things are it'll be better in a minute um but we sat there in bed just hanging out uh, in the bedroom for about an hour maybe 45 minutes talking through some of the things I had written in my notes yesterday during the sprints and oh my gosh, the story is coming together. And you know, when I first, this is often the way it is for me with stories that when I first come up with the idea, it's just a tiny little seed and I don't fully know what it's going to lead to or what it will grow into. It just is a spark. So it's a character, it's a scene, it's a piece of the world, it's a scenario or a premise, but I don't really know what it's going to be about. And you know, Everybody sort of finds and develops their stories in different ways, but I found, have found that for the majority of my stories, it comes from that seed and it, it is almost like it exists somewhere else in its entirety. And I'm just like excavating that story from what it already was meant to be. And my job is not to create it, but rather to discover it. I know that sounds a little bit woo woo, but that's the way I've always felt about my process. And when I first came up with this story about the mirror and the priestesses having this world, I had a sense of it, but I couldn't quite explain it or like, you know, imagine what it was going to grow into. But over time, that little seed sprouts something and then it just radiates outward to a tree growing and then flowers and then buildings and, you know, a whole world comes out of it. And that is part of what happened tonight, talking through it. And it is so much fun coming up with those new ways. So it's like, originally I have five priestesses in my shadow demons world and they all have a gemstone that they are represented by. And originally this world inside a mirror was going to be just belonging to one priestess. But over time I have begun to see it differently. Like, Oh, what if they, it belonged to all five priestesses and they each had a castle. So tonight I was able to draw a map of like, an arena battle, like a plateau in the center of the world with sort of like spokes coming out of it, like all around it. So you've got five pies around the center and each one belongs to, you know, Sapphire, the Emerald Priestess, the Citrine Priestess, and so on. And each like little city has its own castle, its own government, its own potion shops and culture and, and food and farms and all of that stuff. And I just, the way that it works and instead of arena battles, I think it's going to be capture the flag. So I've just, I know I can't explain it all here in just a brief bit, but just know like the story is coming together and it makes me realize how much I have missed this part of like the creation of new worlds and getting excited for stories and just feeling lit up by them instead of dragged down because of pressure that I was putting on myself. And it just feels really good. So uh, George is finishing up putting Evie to bed 
And I always read to her and do her bath. And then he finishes up because my energy is always like too high and the kids don't sleep when I'm up there. <laughs> so George is very calming presence. So he always puts them to bed. And so we're going to keep talking about it a little bit. I also think that this is going to be enemies to lovers. So I've been compiling, like going through my bookshelves and being like, okay, what are the enemies to lovers? Ones that I've read and ones that I haven't read. I might make a trip this week to half price books and get some used books. I might trade some things in and uh, get some other books that are enemies to lovers. So if you have any favorite enemies to lovers, fantasy, romanticy kind of stories, let me know. Give me all your recs. I'll show you tomorrow vlog, like what all I have that I'm planning to read because I just feel like when you get depleted and you finish a story or whatever, it can be so helpful to just fill yourself back up with stories of other masterful writers and I'm excited to spend a little bit of time reading, but for now I do also need to finish putting away the groceries and to clean a little bit. And then, um, yeah, I still want to get to bed relatively early tonight, but I'm feeling loads better after a day of minimal screens and a little bit more, um, just like hydration and rest and things like that. So feeling the energy return and I'm ex so excited for a good week ahead. <laughs> Don't scare you too much, baby I wish to flatter, not a